Hi everyone, a few weeks ago I got this package from Retro Castle. They're an AliExpress seller, and you might know him for his uh, I.O. board that's got the Sega Saturn mini DIN output rather than the VGA like most I.O. boards have. He's doing some really innovative and interesting work around Mr. Hardware Hacking and Analog Video. I've got to know him a little bit over the last few months chatting on Discord, and he's got a really interesting story, and he sent me this box full of prototype stuff for me to test. I'm gonna open it up and show you what's in there. Let's go. This video is meant to be a kind of rambly unboxing and tour over the products. This is not an in-depth review. I've got to know Ivory a little bit over the last few months. I think his products are generally pretty good and he sent me these for testing and feedback. So if you're thinking about buying a product from Retro Castle and you're hearing my enthusiasm for them, please keep my bias in mind when you're making your purchasing decision. Duffman says a lot of things, oh yeah. <laughs> I've been talking with Ivory from Retro Castle for a few months now on Discord and I think that his environment is super fascinating. So there is a Mr. Community in China. They're mostly doing it in Chinese language. Some of them are watching the English stuff like Ivory and then disseminating that information out to their fellow Chinese people, but it's still a little bit isolated. And even though China is a huge country, it's a small community. Now, two things really stood out about why Ivory's been able to progress so far. First of all, he's clearly brilliant. If you make a Mr. IO board, your own design, uh, and then uh, up, look, anyone who's doing that, my hats are off to you. You are brilliant. You know far more than me. First thing is, uh, he when he's making these different devices, he's doing like 15 or 20 different PCB revisions. He's testing, trying, updating, testing, trying, updating. And he can do that because he lives in the same town as the PCB factory. Now, I know there's PCB Way and other companies in the West you can send it to and it's a couple of days back and forth and that's fine. But he goes to the factory and talks to them, gives them the order, asks them some advice about soldering or, or this method or that method, and then goes back home and refines his design. So he has access to these amazing resources there. And the other part is the parts shortage. Now, we've heard so much about this in the retro gaming community. It's been happening even before the pandemic. And there's numerous uh, high profile retro projects that are being held up because in the West, the we can't get access to the chips and the resources and the physical components that are needed. Mike Chi's uh, Retro Tink 4K, we know that's held up because of parts. Uh, Web HDX, who St Steve and I talked to, he's the creator of the Pico Boot. Uh, that dude's amazing. He's got a whole replacement WaveBird receiver ready to go, designed, it works, but he just can't get the inventory and the parts and access to the stock that he needs to really make that a thing and get that to the market. Now, switch over to China and look, it's still a part shortage. It's not magical, but they have access to way more stuff and way easier than we do. So there's different forums and ordering websites. And of course, it's very quick to get the different packages sent around China. So I thought his story of the way that he's bringing this retro community to China was really interesting. And the dude's clearly a talented hardware hacker. So finally, all right, let's see what's inside the box. He sent me a bunch of cool stuff. I don't know what's in here. Oh, jeez, I don't wanna get the knife in too far. All right. So nicely shipped as well. Look at this stuff. It's, in, it's firmly in the box. There's a lot of foam in there. It kind of works. There's foam here too. Okay, what do we got here? I think this is, is this a Mr. Case? Oh, dang, brushed metal. This is one of these, oh, look at that. Yeah, boy. So top plate and bottom plate. This brushed metal is tremendous. Nicely done, good quality. Chinese toilet paper, anyone want? Okay, good. What's all this about? Oh, is this a snack adapter? I think this is a, this is a snack adapter for the PSX core on the Mister. Dang, I think. We've got one, player one, player two, and these are the memory card. You could plug a memory card on top of that. Hell yeah, that's a nice design. How's that gonna go? Oh, this is it, this is it, this is it. This is one of his IO boards. 
This is some pretty cool loot that Ivory sent me. Now, if we check out his IO board, let's have a look at a few things there. First of all, this is the VGA D sub version, got the regular, U, but it's got USB-C for power if that's more convenient for you there. On the underside, that's where it's gonna connect to your DE10 Nano. It's got the fan built in. Now, the nice thing is that it's got USB ports built into the IO board. So if you're on a budget and you don't wanna get the uh, USB adapter board that would usually sit on the bottom of the DE10 Nano, you could just buy this and it's gonna, the IO board and some USB ports all in one might save you a little bit. So the idea of Ivory's IO board is it's designed to be used with this PlayStation snack adapter that he gave me. So we've got player one, player two here. Now these ones at the top, that's very interesting. These are for the memory card. So you could put a regular PlayStation memory card there and you can see if it say it says memory card. So that'll slot right on. This probably needs some nice 3D printed shell or something like this, but it totally works in this form. We've got, I presume this is composite video here because you're gonna need that for light gun games. So this might be what this is about to get light gun games going. And there appears to be a USB pass through on the side because if we look at the way it's this snack adapter is designed for his IO board because it fits in like this and it comes off the side looking real nice, quite sturdy. The two USBs provide a lot of strength in there. So that's kind of cool. 2000 years later. It's been a few weeks since I recorded that part of the video, some length of time, and I've had a chance just to play with this new Mr. setup and I really like it. I'm really down with it. Uh, the brushed metal case looks great. I know that's a sort of a trendy thing that a lot of Mr. Sellers are using right now. I'll show you my setup here. I'll put it in front of us. We'll do some cutaways as well. Look, this is typically how I use my Mister, so keep that in mind. Okay, network cable, because that's going to my retro NAS. Right on, Dan. Uh, analog out via VGA, that's producing my audio. Now, one thing that I didn't know when I made that other part is that this thing can be totally powered from the USB-C. I didn't understand that. I had to talk to Ivory, and he tells me, and it, it works, that Power is delivered via USB-C, and then the I.O. board is then sending the power to the DE10 Nano. You don't need to plug in that. And in fact, he says, if you're using the power into this USB, don't plug in power directly into the DE10 Nano. It's not how this whole thing is designed to work. So that creates one very cool thing. The buttons that are on the front, we've got our regular Mr. Buttons, reboot, user, and on-screen display. But then we've got power. And this direct this turns on and off. There's no more external switches anymore or pulling it out of the wall or something like that. Okay, a big question I know many of you will be interested in is how is the analog picture quality? It's an IO board, this is its job, is to output fantastic audio. So I want to again preface this. I am not an in-depth reviewer. I am not retro RGB Bob taking link and blowing up to a million times his original size and analyzing pixels. So I'm giving you my view, which is done with these two guys right here. I'm eyeballing this stuff to get a view of it. So what I did is I got this set up here and this is a 20 inch Dell 4x3 monitor and I've set the Mr. to output 1600 by 1200 out of the analog port, which is this panel's native resolution. So that means the panel's not doing any scaling. The way that I tested it is with this guy. It's a magnifying glass. So what I did is, first of all, I have one of these because I'm 42 and now I need a magnifying glass. I had a process where I took the original IO board with the original setup. I looked at it, I got the screen, I put it on here. I looked at it close, looked at where, yeah, if it was bleed, looked at the different test patterns. Then I swapped in the new retro castle IO board, did the same thing, swapped, 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 analyzed, looked and as much as I could. I can see pixels. So, that's one thing about this screen. I can see the pixels with the magnifying glass. To the best of my knowledge and my observation, it's perfect. So yeah! <laughs> Next up, I want to look at the snack adapter that came with it. This is the same unit again, but with the snack adapter hanging off the top and it, it's all there and it works. The board connects very sturdily because it's coming with those two USB ports. 
into the IO board. It's really sturdy. Uh, that's not a problem. It fits. Memory cards work fine. You can see my memory card hanging out of the top here. I, I kind of like this bare shell thing. I know some people might want to put a nice 3D printer case on it. I kind of dig the raw aesthetic of this. Um, it looks good to me and it absolutely works. So when I turn on snack in the PSX settings, everything's great. I've got a white PS2 controller. This is a DualShock 2, it works. I tried an original straight up pad, it works. PS1 analog, no problems. PS1 mouse, playing SimCity, that thing was great. Even my fight stick, one of these little ones, everything worked fine. Memory cards work totally fine. You access them exactly how you would expect. I wanna talk briefly about power once more. Now, I'm using the USB-C and it's just a two amp adapter. And I think ultimately USB-C is the way to go. It's more convenient. We're getting them more around our houses and our studios, um, but I'm a Mr. Early Adopter. So I've got a really nice five volt, four amp power supply that already has the dual barrel jacks that I've been using in a regular standard OG setup. So I don't really need that anymore. And honestly, four amps, while very good to have the overhead, probably overkill for my setup because all I have is one simple little retro bit controller. That's the US Saturn PCB one that I've inserted in there. So I don't really need more than that. Seems to be working fine off two amps of power, which is more common. Uh, maybe if you've got like an Apple charger or some really hot Android or your Mac charger, that'll deliver more amps. But then do you really want to use that all the time with your mister? So there are some considerations, but I would say in this configuration, a regular USB-C two amp worked really fine for me. All right, let's wrap up with the final pros and cons. Pros, it looks great. The case looks really good, and I like that it's much thinner than the original design. It just looks a little bit sleeker, a little bit more clean. I like that it incorporates extra USBs into the I.O. board. That means that I don't need to buy an extra I.O. board. Well, I already have, so maybe I'll sell it. Not really sure. Ultimately, I like USB-C power. I think it's the way forward, even if I've already got a better uh, DC barrel jack adapter, but I think this is an advantage for this if you're coming into Mr. for the first time. Okay, are there some downsides to this? Well, I think so. First of all, I haven't touched on, the fan in this is not a Noctura. It's just sort of a regular stock fan. So it does make a little bit of noise, not too much, and I'm only comparing because the Noctura, you know, is silent. You can't hear it at all. That's what I previously had. So I hear a little bit of a noise there. Now I asked Ivory, why didn't you use a Noctura? And he said that they're a little bit thicker and he wanted to keep this as thin as possible. He proposed two possible ways forward. One is that uh, a little bit of a WD-40 into the fan should really get that noise right down to very good levels. That's one possible solution. I haven't done that yet. I don't have any WD-40. I'm gonna go out and get some soon. The other solution is he is developed and he's about to release a passive cooling solution here. So rather than a fan, it's got a big metal block that will sit on the FPGA and will then also connect to the aluminum case, and then it transfers the heat to the aluminum case, and that is how it does passive cooling. That's my video. Thanks for watching my first look at this. It probably wasn't quite a quick look. It was more of a slower look, but we got there. My advice to you, if you're looking at these, first of all, this is a legit seller on AliExpress. You can trust in Retro Castle from what I've known of him, what I've seen, everything looks good. Now, if you worry, like if I, I raise some points, some negatives here, please keep in mind, this is still a work in progress. You can buy these right now. And if you watch my video and you're like, yeah, those things are great. I'm totally cool with all of that stuff. I recommend it for you. If you've got some queries, if you're like, oh, what about this? And what about that? And so forth. Do keep in mind, this is still being refined. And that's why RetroCastle sent it to me. So I could give some feedback, put some thoughts out there. And then he he wants to keep working and he wants to keep refining this design. So if you still have some questions or some, you're not quite sure about something, uh, you can hit me up, write me in the comments. I will answer you there. I'm also going to leave some contact information for RetroCastle about how you can talk to the seller directly. If you've got some queries, I found that he's very open to those things. So 
It's still a work in progress, but I really like it so far. I think it's great that we've got these homebrew hackers, these homebrew hardware developers coming out of China, that it's not just a Western thing. It's not just an America, European thing, that Mist is going all around the world. It's been really nice to know Ivory, get to know him. And I hope that you know, if you want this board, I think it'll do you pretty well. Thank you very much. My name is Lewis. This is Zez Retro. I'm going to see you next time. <laughs>